Hi, everyone. It's Andrew from The Market Mindset. There's something really exciting about discovery, uh, discovering anything, uh, whether it's a new idea, technology, or a treasure. The way I look at gold, and especially mining for gold, is basically treasure hunting. And I liken it to when I'd watch these old uh, archaeological digs, you know, trying to find a Spanish galleon off the, the coast of Florida or, or Portugal or whatnot. I, I remember watching those shows and just being amazed at the thought that you could find these treasure chests full of gold coins. Now, take that to a much grander scale, and you have what some junior mining companies are focused on, which are huge possible upside exploration programs where we're talking sky's the limit. And Relevant Gold is one of these that has a huge, big thesis that's truly exciting. And we're talking millions and millions of ounces of gold if their thesis is right. They've entitled this thesis, Wyoming, the Unexplored Abitibi Gold Belt. And that sums up exactly what's going on here uh, that they're proving up. And it's that there's been a shift some 2 billion years ago from what we have up here in Canada, which is the Abitibi Belt, that's 500 miles south in Wyoming, mirroring that same type of structure in geology. And if that's the case, it doesn't take too much effort to look to see what the Abitibi has produced as far as, as gold. Uh, 28 mines right now and, and, and leading the charge. We have a case study up on Great Bear, which is in that district. So let's go talk to Rob Bergman and see what they've seen so far from their work that's making them quite excited about this year ahead. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing, doing very well. Uh, we're really excited to talk to you because uh, this is one of those stories that's uh, it's, it's a big theme. It's a big scale. But along that, you've got a lot of proof systematically along the way that's making this thesis really come together. And let's walk through that uh, kind of step by step. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I, it all started with the development of the thesis, uh, you know, seven or so years ago. Some of our top geologists in our, in our group, in our greater organization, uh, oh, you know, Chris Nikoja, Ben Quady, Eric Noriak, give those guys a big shout out. Brilliant geologists who started to connect dots in the academic literature, saying that Wyoming was connected to the Abitibi gold belts when all the gold came into the system and then later rifted apart to where it presently resides. So it was really that thesis that got us so excited about the, the overlooked potential in Wyoming. Uh, fast forward again, we've been very systematically, as you mentioned, kind of marching all of our assets, five district scale uh, projects up the, the value spectrum and the exploration cycle and continue to, I guess, unearth more and more support of the thesis and the direct analogs to the Abitibi and the type of gold mineralization we see there. Uh, most recently with last year completing a small initial drilling program at one of our targets at our Lewiston project, where we had 10 of 11 holes return, um, sheer host of gold mineralization, and we see some really big orogenic gold system potential there. Uh, and, and building off of that, we've recently got kind of the rest of our data from our regional programs, including a, a new regional um, airborne geophysical survey that is pretty incredible. Uh, as far as the detail it's it's showing us and the connections between mineralization structure and how that correlates to something like the Abitivity. So it's been been a been a fun kind of uh, you know spring season in getting a lot of this data and being able to see it. Yeah, and that's the that's the fun part is I've kind of likened this to like any kind of discovery uh, is always exciting to discover anything whether it's an idea, it's it's something new, whatever. But treasure hunting, I kind of like in gold, looking for gold, it's kind of like treasure hunting. Uh, and to, to be able to get on the path, there's just something intellectually stimulating, never mind, you know, the, the possible further outcome. But to see that you're 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 testing things and you're seeing them come alive real time. Uh, and syst and that systematic approach. And the one thing I want to reach out to everyone is go take a look at their website because they will list each milestone that they've checked off as they hit. Uh, and they have the timelines for things. And there's not a lot of companies that have that too. So it's great to have a, a scorecard that you can see what you guys are up to, how you're working uh, and what's coming of it all. And maybe if I could take a step back because we don't really talk about this as much is that you have a, a, a level of expertise through uh, a private company that you have and a lot of work and technical ability 
that uh, many people may not know, but I don't know if you feel comfortable talking about Big Rock, but maybe you could kind of say like what that entails and who you guys work with. Yeah, sure. No, more than happy to, uh, you know, because uh, I love Big Rock. It's an incredible company. It's a great organization. Uh, and it's we've got some some really wonderful people in that group. Um, and yeah, it's a technical consulting group. We service the natural resource sector, uh, predominantly mining and exploration, but we work in you know, uh, renewable energy, we work in all different types of natural resource problems, solving complex problems. Um, and that, you know, we, we've got about five offices now across North America. We've got a very, very deep human capital infrastructure with our scientific group there. And we, we predominantly service the major miners. So the Rio Tinto, BHP, Glencore, Freeport, Anglo, South 32, the lists, uh, the lists go on and on and on. Um, and that really has given us a, a unique perspective on how to explore, how to develop, and how to apply best management practices from everything from safety, environmental stewardship, community relations, ESG, and you learn a lot from the, the biggest companies on those types of things, as well as how to be nimble, how to make quick decisions that uh, efficate shareholder value quickly, that sometimes uh, large groups are a bit more challenged to do. And so that company, yeah, yeah, we built it, uh, started it in 2010. We're one of the top tier consulting groups in North America and beyond, uh, taking on projects in Africa and things like that. Now, Brian and I are, aren't really involved in the day-to-day -day of that group anymore and handed it off a few years ago to the succession plan. And they've been doing a great job of just continuing to propel uh, that scientific genius forward. Yes, and that kind of uh, big brain uh, that moves forward, that gives you guys access to data. You get to see so many projects uh, and how they come together. Uh, I, I wanted to kind of mention that because it just kind of highlights the experience you guys have that when you're looking at this project, you're seeing it from the lens of not just, uh, oh, hey, we're, we really, really like this. It's from a host of huge mega companies that you've worked with, seeing their data, seeing what they go through and applying that to uh, the, the project here at Relevant. Yeah, and understanding what, what you need to identify early that could be a later problem, mitigating as much of the front end risk. Let's face it, and you know, gold exploration early, excuse me, early exploration, it's it's incredibly speculative. It's it's high degree of risk. It is treasure hunting. Yeah. Um, there's an incredible failure rate. And so it's our job as a management group to apply ev everything we have in our toolkit from that deep human capital infrastructure to our knowledge and exposure we've gotten in our careers. To mitigate as much of the front end risk as we can. You can't mitigate it all. It is a pure risk play. Uh, we're trying to find big, big orogenic systems. Uh, that doesn't come easy. It's not for the faint of heart, but there is a lot you can learn uh, from, especially from the biggest groups in the world on, you know, what do you need to be thinking about on the metallurgical side early in exploration that could have a, a dramatic effect, maybe not on um, the deposit going into production necessarily, but it might dictate the size of a deposit you need to get or need to find to know that your economics will be there. And so those are those, those insights that we're, we're able to uniquely apply in the early phases of what we've been building at Relevant Gold. That's also why we, we diligently were working so quietly for a long time and, and waited to get the story more widely spread as we built the portfolio and scooped up what we saw as the best ground. I mean, it's also, you see it uh, on your website and in your deck where Archie's rule, I won't call it your motto, but it's something that's very good to have uh, in your mind, even at an early stage explorations uh, company. Yep. And, you know, a lot of folks aren't aware of Archie's rule, so I'm happy to explain it. It's something that was beat into Brian in my head by Peter McGaw since university. Uh, you know, who, who Peter is one of our illustrious board members, but he's also been a mentor of ours since university. And Archie's rule is pretty simple because it's, you know, what, what it's really trying to determine is what does it take for a mind to live through the cycles, right? So when you have a down cycle in commodities, what, what is going to ensure that that mind is going to be able to continue to live through economically through those phases? And so the way Archie's rule is simplified is really to be economic, a mind must have a recovered value of two times its all in operating costs. And that typically, in you know, obviously there's jurisdictional components and things that could cause a mining operation to fail. But from a production and economic standpoint, Archie's rule really illustrates that if you can meet that, then you're likely to live through the cycles. And the easiest way to focus on that in the gold space is focusing on high grade large systems. That's why we like orogenic gold plays like the Abitibi, 
and like we see in the Archean belts in Wyoming. It's really relevant news today, too, because we could see uh, with like kind of the zinc price coming down, like falling apart a little bit there, uh, a lot of major mining uh, putting, you know, mines that we're producing kind of on just on hold for the time being, because uh, that that can happen and prices can fall. And then no one's worried about nickel not coming back. But uh, when you've got high inflation like we have today, the you know, cost of everything is going up. Uh, this this does occur. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, why operate at a loss if you don't have to? I mean, some of those big groups have the the you know the fortunate ability to make those decisions, and um, you know they they make those smart decisions for good reasons usually. So yes, uh, and then okay, so I want to also kind of talk about we've talked about some of the people and, and you know Dr. McGaw on the board, uh, him being more than just on the board. He's a mentor to you guys. Your vast experience with Big Rock and and what that brings to the table, but you've also because of the data. Uh, because of what you've been finding, you've attracted someone else who's, I, I would say it's it's important to mention and not to, to drop names or whatnot, but mainly because we've just finished doing a bit of a case study on Great Bear. Uh, and I don't want to liken you guys to, to Great Bear other than the fact that Great Bear is Red Lake, which is in the Apatibi, it's up north. Uh, but you did attract someone that uh, Chris Taylor had said, this is the one person we wanted in Great Bear. Um, and that, you know, you could say that does mean something because once again, I'll let you let you say who that is. But the data was enough; it was more than a thesis. The data was enough to attract someone who knows Red Lake and Abitibi very well. And you can kind of maybe say who that was and how that came about. Sure. So I, uh, you know, can only assume you're you're speaking about Mr. Rob McEwen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're we're very happy and excited to have him as a as a shareholder. Um, and exactly, yeah. He, you know, when you talk about Archie's rule, I mean, high grade is something that. When you look at the the evolution of Gold Corp and and what they focused on in Red Lake, it was a great thing, uh, and that's really what once they strung that together, it's what built some of these incredible mega deposits. Um, and so I think you know from the perspective of our group, we're so excited to have someone like that bring that experience, that knowledge, and stuff to our shareholder base uh, and that credibility and support. It's it's certainly great great to have. Um, and I think at the end of the day, when we look at our entire shareholder base as a whole, we are very uniquely held. We have a, a large contingent of very sophisticated mining investors in the group. Um, and that has bode really well for us as we continue to develop this thesis, because it is really big. You need big visionary thinkers who see the long game in something like this. There's the near-term opportunity in everything we're doing, just like every other junior. But we're also building an exploration story that could live on for centuries, like Red Lake and some of these jurisdictions in the Apatibi. Yeah, the scope and scale, uh, that's what's so exciting. But also, it becomes almost fearful for someone to go, wait a second, that's that's really big. <laughs> and it takes, a, you know, it takes uh, a lot of courage to go at something like that, because you know, when you're looking for something big, this is this would be big if the thesis comes together. And I, I say this, you know, also because we deal with a lot of people that are new into mining and they're they're trying to figure out how do I learn about it. And often the easiest way for them is to to rely on okay, if this person knows that 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 must mean something because uh, they don't know how to exp you know, to to look at geology and whatnot. And it doesn't remove that it's not still risky and speculative, but we try to find similarities between other projects and liken them up so that someone could cut through 90% of other projects and go, this has attracted these people. They have an expertise in this area. This certainly makes this uh, a strong contender to pay more attention to. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, it, it comes down to most of the most successful things in our industry and in all industries do usually come down to people um, and, and the people that have the perseverance to chase the big ideas. And so I think you're exactly right. And for a group like us, I mean, Brian and I, who founded Relevant Gold um, and have founded a number of companies in the private side of the sector, we've consistently been told we're crazy. And, and <laughs> you know, our first company, Big Rock, which is now a top tier firm, you know, we started that when we were 24 years old and through... 2500 bucks each into the hat and uh and you know here it stands today as 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 this firm that it's become which is pretty incredible but i mean everybody was a naysayer um so that's something we're used to and we actually thrive on that right it gives us that that kick in the butt for perseverance that you need to chase a big idea like this uh and so we're not scared of it by any means we're nothing but excited about the potential and the prospects we have 
and that was a challenging market back then as well. So it wasn't like there's money being thrown around and everyone's <laughs> leaping yeah. on board. So it you're also done. moving forward now through a challenging time. And that's what you see if there's similarities between a lot of successful people in any industry is that when they see like chaos and challenges, it's like they double down. It's like, let's work harder uh, because it's too easy to get mixed up in the noise and the social media and, and whatever else is that there needs to be a mindset for people to go, there's chaos. Let's focus harder on what we want to build. I agree. Yeah, I think I think the lull in the markets has been personally a blessing in disguise. It's giving groups like us an opportunity to methodically um, position everything the right way, the best way possible. Uh, and so, you know, I, I'd love for the markets to just be through the roof all the time. But in <laughs> these low markets, in these slower times, it's absolutely an opportunity to stack the cards as much as you can in your favor. And I mean, that's part why I consider part of my job is to put realistic investing in a bit more, not patience, I hate that word, but certainly in a more realistic time frame. I mean, th there's one wonderful about AI is that it's it's happening very quickly with trillions of dollars being thrown at it. But most investment takes a long period of time and commitment and discipline. Uh, and that's something I think we're desperately lacking overall uh, in a lot of the markets is if you want to build something, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a systematic approach. And uh, I look to try to help people to go, let's realistically look at things. And as soon as a company hits milestones, you reward them by you know, maybe taking a further position or, or whatever your, your strategy is. But let's get into a bit more technical because we've covered a lot of the, the stuff I like to cover for the people that don't know as much. But maybe you can get into some of the, the real technical stuff for those that are watching and listening and maybe want to glean out some of the technical goodies that will be lost on on someone who is new to mining. Sure. Well, you know, again, that's happy to dive <laughs> as deep as possible into that. It, it always excites me uh, to get the, the geology juices flowing. And, you know, I think one of the most unique things about Relevant Gold is that because of the nature of our thesis, this is not just a, a bizarre out-of-the-box thesis. I mean, it might come off that way, yes, uh, but it's something that was published in the academic literature by dozens and dozens of groups that were much smarter than I. Uh, we're just really connecting it to the economic opportunity. And it's that this Wyoming Archean belts are an extension of the Abitibi. And so the difference with our thesis is we have a 150 year plus thumbprint of exploration to do's and to not do's. Um, the Abitibi has been extremely well studied and published, whether it's the, the technical data, whether it's the economic data, there's so much information out there that provides us with a very detailed thumbprint to guide our exploration in Wyoming. And the best part about that is as we've applied these insights and chased and built the technical components to build through discoveries, we continue to find more and more analogs and support of this connection. So it tells us that the model works, that we can continue to apply these Abitibi insights to our exploration in Wyoming, and we've continued to get success at every step. And so as we look at that, what does that success look like? That looks like over 10 kilometer shear zone trends that are laced with gold mineralization. That looks like orogenic systems of scale that have never really been thought about from that perspective in areas where there's high grade historic gold mining from the 1800s. So some of these areas that's, you know, it's not that we're the first to look, we're the first to look with a new lens and we're the first to drill it and apply modern exploration technique. And then on top of that, as we've stacked up the data, we've gotten some recent data in the, in the geophysical survey that was flown that really just helps to paint a much clearer picture of the size, the scale of these structural hosts and opportunities and the potential of our portfolio uh, specifically. And so we talk about Red Lake, we talk about that. The analogs that we have are very strong. Um, we'll look at our Bradley Peak project, which you know, this is its own kind of entire camp that we acquired. We hadn't done a whole lot of work on it until last year, did a great regional program identified three high grade um, targets across that portfolio, big district scale targets. And then once we got more and more data, i.e. this geophysical data, this lights up as a massive fold hinge structure. Now that's exactly the type of environment that helps to trap these gold deposits, right? They look for that structural trap as well as the right host rock where that you know gold that's in a solution 
is happy to precipitate out and drop it into the rock. Um, and so we, we knew that going in from our detailed mapping and sampling, we started to identify that. And now the geophysics has given us a layer of detail undercover, which we couldn't see because of lack of exposure in areas of this beautiful fold hinge coming off of the main Archean belt. And this is textbook, what you see all across the Abitibi, uh, whether it's Red Lake, Hemlo, it's the right type of rocks. We have comatiites, metabasalts, we have iron formation. We have the whole suite that you'd expect to see of Archean rocks. We have the right structures, and that seems to be where our targets that we've generated and, and identified some high grade at surface are also located. So when you start to see it all line up so well, it's really exciting. And you're also seeing that Bradley Peak and that South Pass are, are connected as well, or, or seem to be connected. Yep, they're along that exact same Archean same, belt. Yeah. And that was always part of our thesis, but um, now we have such a very clear line that we can draw, and you can see it clear as day in the, in the geophysical data. Um, and it connects these two epicenters along that major feature, and it shows that our high-grade targets are in the secondary structures coming off of that major feature in both of those camps. And when you see the amount of projects you have and the scale of land, uh, you can see why you really have to be systematic and patient because this, once again, the scale of what could be there is massive, but the workload as well to, to step by step build this out, uh, it's going to take some time. Yep. A lot of time and a lot of resources. So yeah, that's certainly a lot of resources. Yeah. So what's yep. the next step then? What, what should someone be looking right now? Because uh, once again, this is a story I think a lot of people could get their, their teeth sunk into because they, there's a lot of information about Abitibi they can find. And there's a lot of stuff they go, oh my goodness, this is really, this is big treasure hunting. This is something that is exciting to follow, even just as an intellectual curiosity. Um, what, what's next for you guys to, to kind of check off on the checklist so someone goes, very interesting. I'm going to continue listening to this story develop. Yeah, so I mean, for us, it's it's really aggressively pursuing the exploration at this point. Uh, we're, you know, in our minds at a corporate level, we we feel as though we we've, we've launched far beyond proof of concept, and it's time to really start focusing drilling dollars as quickly as possible into targets. Um, and the way we do that is by continuing to do our our, our geophysical exploration and our our detailed work at surface and continue to build that pipeline of drilling targets. So that's consistently happening. We're chomping at the bit for the snow to clear and yeah. get out there as soon as possible. And then drilling, right? Um, drilling is what moves the needle. Drilling is what helps, you know, it's the truth machine. Uh, and, and our projects have never been drilled except for the two that we've drilled to date. And so, you know, a lot of our focus is gonna be moving into that direction of, of drilling off these targets uh, understanding, you know, which which of these are going to result in potential big discoveries, which aren't, where can we put X's on the map uh, and do some of the negative exploration to minimize future burn rates and things like that. So systematic approach, but I do see us starting to get a bit more aggressive because, you know, the stars are really starting to align. And and I think it's, it's time that we put a lot more drill dollars into these things. Um, you know, we've cumulatively drilled across two targets, 5,000 meters. And when you look at the average in the Abitibi, uh, for one target, it's it's something like ten to fifteen thousand meters before a discovery intercept. So the success rate we've had with almost seventy percent hit rate on our drilling in such a small program, it's very encouraging. But these yeah. things take a lot of drilling, and and so I think that's kind of one of the the obvious next steps over over the next kind of. 24 months, 12, 24 months plus is really starting to move things as fast as we can into the drill testing phase and, and continuing to drill out. Great well, I, I know a couple of years back, looking at some of the gold companies in the Abitibi, I mean, you see like 200,000 meter programs. So, I mean, if yep. they are big, big programs and a lot of money flows into these when they see the things they need to see. So uh, it, to hit the numbers, like you said, on a small program is very exciting because once again, this can open up very fast, very quickly. Uh, and that's why kind of taking a step and, and patiently moving systematically is so important because they can blow up very quickly in a very favorable way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would encourage listeners to take a look at uh, some of the financial statements and MDNAs of some of the producers, uh, specifically the mid tiers who often will publish how much exploration drilling they've done, whether it's brownfields, greenfields, they might not say what targets, but uh, a lot of these groups in the Abitibi in a given, you know, 24 month period might put a half a million to uh, a, a million meters of drilling into just their exploration. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's tremendous amount of drilling and, 
I think that's been the important key for us is making sure everything's teed up and that when we invest those drill dollars, they're the best money being spent the best way on focused targets, testing the concept and thesis. And that's what we've done to date. We're going to just continue to, to work at that. Well, I've not been shy about saying how excited this thesis is because I like it's big game hunting and it's a, it's a term, I mean, it's being overused, but I, I, I love it because it is that scale. It's that size. It is treasure hunting, but it is that it's coming with a team that I'm I, you know more than comfortable with that's being put together. And when we look at things, uh, whenever we try to educate people about the space is that it's it's the people, it's the project, and it's the money behind it. You have to have all three. You guys certainly have all three and the data keeps on rolling in and we're really looking forward to see what happens this spring and summer uh, as, as more data is revealed and we see what uh, targets are, are coming into focus. Yeah, well, same with us and we're going to keep doing what we can do to you know rapidly progress up the value cycle and uh, wish everybody to take a look, stay tuned. Don't ever hesitate to reach out if you want to dig deeper on the technical side or the corporate side, some of our, you know, whatever, more than happy to to dig in on any topic. Um, at the end of the day, we're educators uh, all the time. And, you know, that's that's the least we can do for the market in general. And I think uh, if you're looking for early stage gold explorers, you know, look no further than relevant gold. Well, thanks so much, Rob. I really appreciate you doing this catch up for us. Thanks for having me as usual. I always love our chats. All right, take care. Have a great weekend. You too. Cheers. 